finance. Students have not done well. I don't finance, know why. Statewide. But <sighs> typically, they don't. I think there are eight to 12 questions on finance on your exam. Oh, the bar is gone, isn't it? Okay, let me bring it back. So you really need to know this finance stuff. We are not lenders, but we do need to know enough about financing that we can tell our clients to go talk to a lender. And we've got math in the financing section. So you're gonna to have to learn how to do math calculations. And that's on your exam as well. Even though we don't do it, we've got to know how to do it. So um, this is an important chapter and it's rather lengthy. We will not get through it today. We'll start it today. We'll finish it up tomorrow. Okay. This is unit 14 in your textbook. It's unit 13 in your workbook. You've got to know the terminology that goes along with financing and the concepts. Let's start with just basic definitions. Principle is the amount of money you borrow. We talked about principle earlier being your client. This is a different principle. The principle is your balance on your loan. How much money do you owe? It's going to start out with the full amount of your loan and then decrease a little bit every month when you make your payment. So the balance on your loan is your principal. Interest is the charge for borrowing money. That's what the lender is going to make for lending you that money. It is always paid in arrears. If you were closing on a property today, the 11th of June, your first payment would be due August 1st. And when you made that August 1st payment, that would pay July's interest because it's paid in arrears. But the lender is going to want June's interest. So you're going to pay June's interest in advance from the day of closing till the end of the month. Since you will not have a July 1st payment to pay June's interest, they want it at closing. That's that interim interest that we calculated on the settlement statement. Interim interest is that month's interest paid in advance at closing okay and it's only charged on your outstanding balance it is simple interest and simple interest means that interest will be paid on the unpaid balance compound interest you pay it on the full loan amount but that's not what your mortgage interest is and we count the day of closing right donna they got to pay interest on the day of closing until the end of the month. Your interest calculated on your unpaid balance. So every month, the lender will recalculate the interest that you owe. And every month, it'll decrease just a little bit. We're going to later, probably tomorrow, do some calculations to figure out how much interest you pay on a loan and every month it's going to reduce just a little bit. In the beginning, your interest payment will be higher than your principal payment. You may make a thousand dollar a month payment and $990 of that might be interest and $10 go to principal. 
But then the next month, eleven dollars may go to principal, and only nine hundred and eighty-nine go toward interest because that ten-dollar principal you paid that first month will reduce your balance a little bit, and then they'll recalculate the interest on that unpaid balance rather than the full loan amount. Your principal and interest. It's referred to as your PI payment. PI payment is principal and interest. Today has been hard to follow along with the internet going in and out. I agree, Starla. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Amortization. Amortization is the term for the process of paying off a loan in monthly installments. So when a loan is amortized over a 20 year period, that means you're going to make 240 monthly payments. And every month, your balance will be reducing a little bit. Your lender will give you or your client an amortization uh, form at closing showing every payment and how much of that payment is going to interest and how much of it's going to principal. I wouldn't advise looking at it. It's very discouraging. So just put it in your file, leave it there and don't look, don't look. You don't want to know. Okay. Debt service is your mortgage payment. Debt service is your PI payment, principal and interest. So every month when you make a payment, that payment is referred to as your debt service payment. We start talking about uh, doing profit and loss and calculating the return on an investor's money. Debt service is not a closing, it's not a operating expense. Your debt service is paying back money that you borrowed. It's your principal and interest payment. <coughs> and then your PITI payment, that's your penny payment. That is your principal interest taxes and insurance. If you put less than 20% down payment on a loan, then your lender could require that you pay one twelfth of your taxes and one twelfth of your insurances along with your PI payment each month. And that TI is put into escrow to cover next year's premium. So when you have that TI payment, that's why you need to do the insurance early on in your due process to see what that insurance premium is going to be because one twelfth of it will be added on to your principal and interest payment. And it may be that it'll be so high that you would not qualify for the loan. So we need to get our clients to check on that early on in the process. Here's how your PITI works. Your principal comes from the bank to purchase the house. Your interest comes from you to go to the bank to pay for borrowing the to pay for borrowing that money. And then your taxes goes to the tax collector after they've been held in escrow. So each month they'll go into the escrow account at your lender. And then when they're due next year, your lender will write a check to cover your insurance. I mean, your taxes, write it to the tax collector in the city or county where you're located. And then your insurance could be homeowner's insurance, maybe private mortgage insurance, maybe flood insurance, could be all three. But 
whatever the monthly premium would be, the one twelfth is what you got to add to your principal and interest payment. Okay. And then your lender will write a check from your escrow account to your insurance company to pay that premium for the second year. Then you begin building toward the third year. Everybody understand that okay? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Equity is the value of your house minus what you owe on it. That is your equity. If you put 20% down on your loan, when you get the loan, you've got 20% equity in your home when you close. As time goes on, that equity will build. If you owe $100,000, but your property is worth 150000 then you have $50,000 equity in your home. Does that make sense? The difference between the value and what you owe on it? Okay. Usury is state laws. Usury laws set limits on how much creditors can charge in interest. Not all states have usury laws. North Carolina does. Our legislator set a limit on how much interest can be charged on consumer loans. You know, we used to have those payday loans. You remember some years ago, you could go to a finance company and get a payday loan. We don't have those anymore. And the reason we don't is because the interest they charged was higher than what was allowed by state law. They've all moved to South Carolina. Do you know why they moved to South Carolina? No usury laws. In South Carolina, consumer lenders can charge whatever they want to. There's no limits set. But in North Carolina, there is. Now, usury laws do not apply to mortgage loans. Lenders making mortgage loans are not covered. So, you really don't have to worry much about that because your mortgage loans are very competitive. If you look at the rates of different companies or different banks, they're all pretty much in line with each other. But when you talk to these finance companies and companies that finance cars, you know, they can charge pretty much what they want to up to the maximum of the usury laws. Donna says she had a friend who caught up, caught up in that. You talk about the payday loans, Donna. A lot of people got caught up in that. They thought, well, this is a good deal. I can go get a loan for what my paycheck's going to be and then just, you know, turn in my paycheck. It's not just for what your paycheck was. They were charging like 30 and 35% interest in addition to your paycheck. So people were getting in debt up to their eyeballs because of the high rate of interest that was charged on those loans. Did you ever see the TV commercial that was on several years ago? There was a, a girl that was, uh, Native American, she was an Indian, lived on a reservation, and she was advertising loans that a bank in the reservation would make. See, they're not governed by any laws, so they can do pretty much what they want to. And in the advertisement, she said, yes, it is expensive, but you can have the money in your checking account the next day. 
Josh says he's seen as high as 400 percent. Yeah, mm. that advertisement mm. I was talking about made by the Indian Reservation, that was 153 percent interest. And if you just imagine how much you would be paying back, not as much as Josh has seen at 400 percent, but 153 percent interest. You think right now our mortgage interest is less than 5 yeah, percent. So. And you think 5% compared to 153%, that is a ungodly amount of interest. You would never, ever get that paid off, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Discount points. We calculated discount points on our settlement statement and discount points are prepaid interest. If someone wants to pay a lower rate of interest over the life of the loan, they can buy discount points. Each discount point will reduce the interest rate one eighth of a percent. One eighth point one two five is what it will reduce your interest rate, but it will cost 1% of the loan amount. If you had two discount points, that would cost you 2% of the loan, but it would reduce your interest rate 0.25. Over the life of a 30 year loan, that reduction of 0.25 will save you some money on interest, but it'll cost you 2% of your loan up front at closing. If you keep that loan for 20 or 30 years, you'll save money. If you refinance it in say five to seven, eight years, you will probably lose money because you won't have saved that much interest in that short a period of time. And most people will sell or refinance within seven years of their purchase. So when they're paying a high prepaid interest for points, they may not benefit over the long run unless they decide to stay in that house for the term of the loan. And it is break time. Thank you, Donna. Let's take a 10 minute break. When we come back, we'll finish up our talk